Turkey has moved decisively to reframe the architecture of its ground forces by initiating full-rate production of the Altig 8x8 wheeled combat vehicle alongside the handover of the first series-built Altai main battle tanks. Announced at BMC's new armored vehicle complex in Ankara on October 28, 2025, the synchronized ramp-up is more than a calendar coincidence, it is a force design choice that couples the shock action of heavy tracked armor with the agility, reach, and deployment speed of a modern 8x8. With monthly targets set at 8 Altais and 10 Altugs, the message is unambiguous, Turkey intends to field a balanced, scalable mix of platforms that can be tailored to different theaters without fragmenting logistics or diluting industrial momentum. What makes the Altug decision notable is the prioritization of an infantry fighting vehicle configuration equipped with an unmanned 35mm turret during the unveiling itself. BMC advertises a family that also includes a roomier armored personnel carrier and a 105mm direct fire variant, but spotlighting the IFV hints strongly at the immediate requirement, protected infantry that can keep pace with armor and secure contested urban or complex terrain. In the first tranches, the calculus favors a blend of firepower, survivability, and troop capacity, rather than maximum caliber or pure passenger volume. This aligns with the contemporary battlefield, where combined arms teams must move quickly, absorb punishment from mines and improvised threats, and fight through drone-saturated airspace while maintaining connectivity to higher echelons. The Altug is conceived as a full-spectrum combat chassis, not a dressed-up personnel carrier. Its 8x8 driveline, multi-axle steering, and high-output power pack are tuned for urban agility and rapid road marches, yet the vehicle retains the stamina to handle broken ground and secondary routes that often define real operations. Survivability is structured around modern ballistic standards and focused on mine and IED resilience, reflecting lessons Turkey has internalized from years of operations in Syria, Iraq, and the Caucasus. Crucially, the platform's internal volume and modular roofline enable rapid reconfiguration, the same hull can carry an unmanned 35mm turret, serve as a command and control node, or, if doctrine and threat demand, host a 105mm gun to deliver direct fire from a wheeled base. With highway speeds exceeding 100 km per hour and an endurance envelope suited to long movements without heavy refueling tails, the vehicle is meant to arrive early and stay relevant throughout the operation. Pairing Altug formations with Altai battalion sketches a clear tactical division of labor. Tanks provide decisive, protected fire at the point of decision, but their survivability and tempo depend on a surrounding ecosystem of reconnaissance screens, infantry escorts, local security, and counter-drone effects. A mine-resistant 8x8 IFV can move faster on national road networks, reach border sectors ahead of heavier tracked columns, and enter dense neighborhoods with a smaller physical and acoustic signature. In such a team, Altug vehicles form a sensor-shooter infantry shell around the tank, suppressing anti-armor teams, contesting light-armored vehicles, and holding what the tank breaks open. Should the 105mm variant follow into production, commanders would gain a wheeled direct-fire companion that can assume some close-quarters risk without exposing a premium main battle tank in every alleyway or mountain pass. This concept resonates with the changing character of land warfare. Loitering munitions, first-person view drones, and widely proliferated anti-tank guided missiles have raised the penalty for slow concentration and predictable avenues of approach. Forces that maneuver in small, electronic warfare-aware packets, fusing sensors, decoys, and resilient communications, can impose dilemmas without clustering into easy targets. Designed from the outset to accept future payloads such as counter-UAS kits, electronic warfare modules, and networked optronics, the Altug gives planners a chassis for continuous capability insertion. Rather than bolt-on fixes, Turkey is setting conditions for rolling modernization, incremental upgrades that refresh lethality, resilience, and situational awareness without disrupting fleet commonality. The industrial logic is equally deliberate. Producing dozens of Altais and potentially more than a hundred Altugs per year from the same modern complex concentrates quality control, 
stabilizes the supply chain, and accelerates learning curves across both families. It also underwrites export credibility. Many armies want contemporary protection and punch but lack the budget, training base, or sustainment capacity for heavy tank fleets. A 30-35-ton Class 8x8 that accepts NATO standard weapons, offers mine protection, and can be assembled locally is a compelling entry point. By anchoring tracked and wheeled lines together, sharing test infrastructure, production disciplines, and national power pack development, Turkey can propose integrated packages, tanks, wheeled combat vehicles, recovery and logistics platforms, and the propulsion to match. For potential partners, that reduces vendor fragmentation and shortens timelines from contract to fielding. There is also a strategy of tempo at work. A domestically built, high-mobility 8x8 gives decision-makers options to surge presence where and when needed, to northern Syria's transit corridors, to the Iraqi frontier, to the Caucasus approaches, to Thrace, or to littoral regions where roads and bridges limit tracked movement. Wheeled units travel lighter, impose less wear on infrastructure, and can disperse quickly under aerial threat. They are well suited to the new era of movement under observation, in which units must remain hard to find, hard to fix, and quick to displace. In that environment, a fleet that can scale output at home, spooling production up or down without external permissions, confers a different kind of deterrence the capacity to replace losses and expand force presence on national timelines. For the Turkish land forces, the institutional benefits extend beyond equipment. Training pipelines can standardize on shared electronic suites, common human machine interfaces, and harmonized maintenance procedures across tracks and wheels. Logistics planners can rationalize spares and build depot expertise that serves both vehicle families. Doctrine riders can refine combined arms tactics that assume persistent drone threat and contested spectrum, exploiting the altogether growth margin to add sensors and soft kill tools as they mature. Even in peacetime, the optics of co-produced heavy and wheeled platforms signal a mature industrial base that is no longer dependent on piecemeal imports for critical subsystems. None of this implies that the tank is diminished. Rather, the Altai is being positioned to operate as part of a mutually supporting web, not as a solitary hammer looking for nails. The aim is credible maneuver, the ability to concentrate effects, not necessarily vehicles, to present multiple problems to the adversary at once, and to sustain operations across more than one theater without exhausting the force. By locking the Alta gate by eight into a steady production rhythm and fielding it alongside the Altai, Turkey has crafted a practical blueprint for mixed armored formations that reflects today's threats and tomorrow's upgrade paths. It is a bet on balance, tracked mass where it counts, wheeled speed where it matters, and an industrial engine at home to keep both humming.